In this video, I want to go through and kind of show you the differences and the ways that you have to go through to set up the procedural aiming between a normal first person setup. And what I mean by that is that's what I've been using throughout the tutorial, which is where your camera is the parent of the mesh. So whenever you move the camera around, you move the mesh around. So that takes a different setup than something like a true first person setup, which would be something along the lines of this to where you're in the end your camera is actually a child of your mesh so i have two examples here because in my plugin here i'm using the other route so to kind of give you a rough idea of what i'm talking about if i hit play on the tutorial series hopefully it plays just fine i'm not sure why it's locking up Alrighty, for some reason it went ahead and it crashed but when i hit play as you can see i aim and all that stuff's all the same so when I aim and look down, for example, as you can see, the camera pointing straight down, the mesh just follows. So with the true first person setup, as you can probably assume, as I look down, the mesh does not follow. Instead, the camera is actually following the mesh. So you can't, I don't have it visible right here, but the camera is actually kind of right in here on the head. So the camera follows the mesh, not the other way around. So because of that, that requires a different setup for when it comes down to aiming. So that way you can look up, down, around, and still have your sights being aligned properly. So to start, let's go ahead and look at the skeleton. So starting with the, the tutorial series, the normal, the uh, non, I guess, true first person. Let's go ahead and go to that skeleton real quick. All right here, skeleton, there we go. So we have the virtual bone starting at the root. So the reason we have it going at the root is because the mesh is never going to really deform at the spine. It's not going to bend because, again, it is attached to the camera. So basically, whenever you go through and look down with the camera, the mesh is just doing this. It's just literally rotating with the camera. Well, it's not doing that exactly. It's pivoting differently, but the point remains. So that's why setting it up for the virtual bones at the root works. If you do not have that and you have the other route, let's go to the skeleton here. As you can see, I instead have it attached to the sight bone. Now that is because instead of the entire mesh, again, rotating like this, instead what we have is our spine is actually what rotates. So when we bend over, we are bending over at the spine. So we're not rotating the entire mesh. So if we were to do the other route that was done in the tutorials, this would completely break because it's not going to have really the correct positions. It's not going to be updated, or the virtual bones are not going to be updated where they're supposed to be. So the way we resolve this is instead, off of the head bone, as you can see, I drop down and I have my virtual bones as a child of the head. So starting at the head, we have our sight bone, and then our hand R and hand L. So that's set up the same after that. So the reason we do that is, again, because as we bend... As you can see, the head follows, or sorry, the uh, head stays in the correct position where we want it to be. So because the virtual bones are a kind of a child of the head, well, they're going to be following the head. So that's how that kind of comes in. So this has some other small differences inside of the animation blueprint as well. But basically, if you want to move over to a true first-person setup using the procedural aiming system, all you have to do is instead of having your virtual bones linked to the root, instead do them at the head. So basically click on your head, add a virtual bone, and do the exact same thing, but instead of doing it for the root, you do it for the head. So you right click, add virtual bone, hand underscore R, and that would be your virtual sight bone, and then the rest gets set up the exact same way. Now on to the actual differences. So if I head over to the animation blueprint here, I have my essentials for this example. Basically, if we go to our relative hand transform, the virtual sight bone gets updated. Yeah, I can actually bring these up and, and compare them. Yeah, that's right here. That came detached. Let's bring this up a little bit. All right, so we have all this being the exact same, but the differences come when we move over to the virtual sight bone. So we're going to do this in a different space. So basically the normal route was for our sight transform. For the virtual sight bone was to use the component space. 
Now again, because we've changed stuff around, we instead use the parent bone space. So that's just for our virtual site bone. And same thing goes as we go down through and we do the, I believe the IK is the same. Sorry, it's been a while since I've actually tried to look through the differences here. Where do we apply the IK? Right here. So that's set up in bone space. I think it is as well the same deal. Yeah, so that's all the same. So yeah, the only differences that you have are where you set your site transform instead of using component space, just set them to parent bone space and you will be good to go. And then everything should work up the exact same and your true first, or sorry, your character will then be able to work with the procedural aiming using, well, true first person. You'll have that set up and good to go. So the end result, obviously being, as I look down and I aim, look up and all that kind of stuff, you can see it tracks it along correctly. So that's pretty much sums it up. Uh, I didn't want to go ahead and do an actual tutorial. I figured it might be a little bit easier to compare since it's just literally very tiny tweaks and I thought I'd be able to give you a little bit of a uh, kind of a cleaner explanation as to why. But yeah, hopefully that helped. So I'll see you in the next video.